Put in your headphones. It's about to get busy. You are not your gear. You're not your active onboard three band preamp with sweepable mid controls. You are not your vintage hand wound pickups. You are not your fret wraps, your super bright strings, or your brand new Fender custom shop bass that's been artificially relicked to make people believe that your playing might actually have some depth to it. You are what you listen to and what you practice. Nothing more, nothing less. So if I know all this, why can't I stop buying gear? So right now you're probably wondering why on earth I'm lying on the floor surrounded by equipment and using a whammy pedal as a pillow. At the end of 2015, while packing up to move house, I suddenly had an epiphany and realised that I'd unknowingly become a gear hoarder. In order to confront my addiction, I resolved to not buy any new equipment for the whole of 2016. I was going to go completely cold turkey. As you might expect, that didn't really go to plan. And if anything, the problem actually got worse. So this year, I'm starting again. Here's how the problem looks as of today. Four electric bases, one double bass, one electric double bass, three guitars, one synth, two amps, two cabs, and then there are the pedals. Five octave pedals, five envelope filters, five overdrives, a couple of compressors and preamps, and then a whole bunch of other weird stuff that I'm never gonna take on a gig. I do the vast majority of my gigs using one bass into one amp with a one by 12 cab and a DI box, that's it. The truth of the matter is that I could actually go to all my future gigs using just that setup, no pedal board, no extra nonsense, and the bands that I work with would not care at all. And I know for certain, that it wouldn't impact on the audiences whatsoever. The pedal board is purely an indulgence for me. So why am I hoarding all this stuff? The short answer is that it makes me feel good. My justification for owning lots of equipment is that I always want to have options when it comes to replicating the sounds that I hear in my head or in recordings on my bass. This is what I call the gear paradox. How do I reconcile the knowledge that buying new gear won't actually fix the holes in my playing with my desire to have the right sound for every single musical situation. Of course, I don't actually have an answer for that. I know that I have way more gear than I need and if I'd spent the time practicing instead of browsing for gear online, I'd be a much better bass player. Part of the problem is that I'm obsessive about sound and in certain musical situations, things don't feel right to me unless I'm processing my signal in a particular way. Now, that's a very pretentious way of saying that I'm addicted to using an octave pedal. I will try and crowbar it into as many tunes as I can on a gig without getting fired. Why is that? Well, most of the time I'm using a standard tuned four string bass and if I'm required to play something that was originally played on a synth bass, then for me the octave pedal is the way to go in terms of recreating that keyboard-like articulation and any sort of electronic music. Now, it's got to the point where I feel like using an octave pedal is just a natural extension of my right hand in the same way that other players might think about whether they're going to use a pick or fingers or slap on a tune. My decision will be, can I get away with using an octave pedal? One of the issues that I've found in trying to overcome my personal gear addiction is the problem that other musicians tend to validate my purchases of new gear. Now this is true both in the real world, on gigs, and more acutely on the non-stop treadmill of horse excrement that is social media, particularly platforms like Instagram. And there's a weird implicit connotation that by buying expensive or rare pieces of gear you are somehow a higher value person and by association a better musician. If you manage to score let's say 
a mint condition deep impact or a rare boss pedal that's been discontinued like a tremolo pan or a slow gear or an octava then somehow you are better than people who don't own those things and that is weird it's also completely untrue now saying that makes me a complete hypocrite because if you take one look at my instagram account you'll see that it's full of pictures of pedals it's an easy way to get a dopamine fix that's my only defense and i know deep down that i have a ton of holes in my playing that i need to work on and my time would be better spent recording myself and performing a savage brutal analysis of what needs work but i don't always feel like doing So how am I going to deal with my gear addiction from now on? I've resolved to take a more pragmatic approach to things by reviewing and cataloguing every single bit of gear that I own in an effort to decide whether or not it's actually going to be useful to me. If I can't justify a purchase or if I don't see myself using a particular sound within the next year or so, then the bit of gear is going to get sold. I'm going to stop stockpiling pedals and more than anything, I'm going to stop committing that cardinal sin of being the guy that shows up to a gig with a brand new pedal that he hasn't plugged in before and attempts to get a workable sound during sound check. 